community, and compassion. The city of Plymouth is on a mission to create an atmosphere where everyone is welcomed. Part three of our diversity series, A Dialogue on Diversity, focuses on the seventh largest city in the state, which has become increasingly diverse. This strip mall in Plymouth has many Eastern European shops. In the past, it was nicknamed Little Russia because of all of the Russian businesses. A newspaper, real estate office, and market are all located in the mall. Plymouth also has a large Indian population. According to the state demographer's office, more than 6,500 residents are Asian out of a total population of 75,000. Reporter Sonia Goins shows us what one immigrant is doing to get acclimated to her new surroundings and how the city is implementing new programs to be more inclusive. People don't typically think of Plymouth as diverse with its predominantly white population, but that's changing. A hub of global medical tech companies is drawing new faces to the city, and you may be surprised to hear they're not afraid of our weather. It's very hot in India, so we love the snow, we love the winter, we love the long winter here. Samita Ghosh is from India. She and her husband moved to Plymouth in 2016. She learned traditional Indian dance while in grade school, and she continues to make graceful moves here in Minnesota. Samayita also has a university degree in fine arts, but she can't work here because of the type of visa she was issued. I cannot work, I cannot earn here, so I was just sitting back at home doing nothing, wasting my time. To make better use of her time, she decided to volunteer with the city of Plymouth. I was not very sure about volunteering because uh, it's not very common in our country, but it's a totally new experience. Her doubts quickly faded when she met new friends while stuffing envelopes. I met new people every time I volunteer. It's nice to have somebody younger. Yes. Yeah. Volunteering has helped Samayita learn about American culture. I learn more about their culture, their food, their daily habits. They share everything about this place. While her Plymouth friends get an education on customs in India. They ask me so many questions about my country, about my food. Samayita also helps out the city's engineering department, making copies of old blueprints of city buildings. Because these are really old. First you have to cut or you have to tape and then you have to start scanning. Officials say she's doing an important job. We can have much faster access to that information instead of going into a drawer where the old paper pl building plans are uh, and flipping through each page until we find what we need. Meanwhile, the Plymouth Police Department is beefing up its community engagement efforts to open the lines of communication with residents and immigrants. The goal is to be more transparent and trustworthy. Did you get a sticker? Sergeant Curtis Smith says the city's community outreach program is all about building authentic and sustainable relationships with residents. Everybody's got different experiences with law enforcement and that's going to impact their response to us when we arrive on a call. Plymouth police have made special efforts to get in touch with certain areas of the community that are higher in diversity. I'm looking to open lines of communication between the police department and members of the community. And the Plymouth Parks and Recreation Department is also doing its part when it comes to diversity and inclusion. To bring the community together, um, provide inclusion for everyone, and provide those opportunities. Events like Kid Fest at the Hildy lets residents experience education, culture, and fun. In Plymouth, Sonia Goins, CCX News.